We're back at Knott's Perry Farm. Berry Farm. For over 75 years, people have been coming here in droves. In fact, they were coming here long before there were any roller coasters at all. All of this was once Walter Knott's actual working berry farm, and people would come for miles around, not only to get his famous boysenberries, but also to get some of his wife's famous chicken dinners. Hungry. So many people were visiting the farm trying to get their hands on those delicious boysenberries and Mrs. Knott's chicken dinners that Walter Knott started adding all kinds of little features to keep them entertained while they waited. Now I've talked about this before, but basically all those things Walter Knott added became the main attraction themselves and pretty soon over the years this developed into the full-fledged theme park it is today. Knott's Berry Farm is full of all kinds of roller coasters and thrill attractions but if you know where to look you can touch the past and uncover the history of the original Knott's Berry Farm roadside attraction built on Walter Knott's Berry Farm. Behind me just south of the main entrance to Knott's Berry Farm is the Berry Market and it's one of the original buildings used by Walter Knott and his family. And just like all those berries some of Walter Knott's early the earliest attractions are preserved just inside. They still sell a lot of berry products here, but the goodies we're looking for are right out this back door, the one that says restroom. The reason it says not an exit is because it's a time machine. Just behind the original Berry Place building is this area. Flanked by restrooms, this waterfall was one of the earliest attractions. Most people from Southern California had never seen anything like this. It was littered with tropical flowers, built in this greenhouse-like structure out of real volcanic rock hauled in from the desert and really took their breath away. Ugh, the restrooms are taking my breath away. Now Walt had a big imagination and in addition to all the beautiful landscaping and interesting volcanic rock around, he also started adding legitimate artifacts from all over the old west to entertain guests waiting in line. Inside this little alcove is one of the earliest of Walter Knott's artifacts. It's this grindstone. And it's actually one of, if not the first commercial grindstone in Los Angeles. According to Walter Knott, it was actually built in England and transported all the way around Cape Horn to be brought to California. Although no longer fully functional, this water wheel here used to turn this small grindstone to show people how flour used to be ground. Back in the day, if you wanted bread, you had to actually bring grain down to a mill and have it ground up and pulverized by one of these huge stones. Mmm, grindy. Never one to miss an opportunity for promoting his family history. This sign explains the connection to Walter Knott's family. My mother's family settled into the San Gabriel Valley in 1868. They hauled grain to an old mill like this one in Puente to be ground into flour. Walter Knott. I think that's what his voice sounded like, but I'm not sure. The only disadvantage to this old school method is that sometimes little flakes and flecks of stone would end up in your flour and then in your bread. Mmm, vitamin S for stone. This thing is pretty cool, but of course the main attraction of this little alcove is this, a replica of George Washington's fireplace. Around 1939 or 1940, the Knots took a trip to the East Coast, and when they saw George Washington's fireplace at Mount Vernon, they knew they had to have one of their own. It was one of Walter Knott's first attempts at a brick by brick historical replica. And it's not just a facade, it's actually a real fireplace. If you stick your head in here, you can see all the way up. It's hard to believe now, but back in the day, they actually used to have real fires burning in there. Here's a picture from the early 40s. This woman is enjoying a nice roasting real fire, while this woman looks slightly less impressed. Maybe it's because she's still wearing her sweater. She's hot. Can somebody bring me some marshmallows? If you compare it to the vintage photographs, almost all of the same props are still here that were here in the early 1940s. Except the gun. Somebody stole the president's gun. Call the Secret Service. Well, the rifle may be gone, but at least there's still this replica of George Washington's pistol. The president was packing heat. Just think of it, for almost 75 years, this replica has stood here to inspire and educate people who might otherwise never get to see Mount Vernon for themselves. 
It just goes to show you that Walter Knott was one of those rare dreamers who understood that education and entertainment could go hand in hand. Now Knott's Berry Farm may have evolved over the years into a full-fledged theme park and changed quite a bit, but if you know where to look, it still has a lot to say about the past. Not just the history of America or the West, but also the story of one man, one hard-working farmer who made his dreams a reality. Well, that's all we got for today. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for some more zany adventures. Check out our website where we're posting something almost every single day now. Check out our t-shirts right here, and we'll see you later. I gotta go back in there and get some boysenberry jam. I'm so hungry. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye. Shake him, Mike. And I'll help. <gasps> A grapefruit.